Hello, this is Matthew Yu. In today's video, we are going to talk about a specific AWS issue. That is, when you are using S3 cross account access, sometimes you will see an access denied error. Today, we are going to talk about this issue and how to fix it. Let's get started. The problem statement is I received some access denied error when I want to access some uh, objects that is related to cross account but my cross-account access has been correctly set up. The root cause of this is one of the two, so it is either your, the bucket owner is not added into the object ACL, or in the second is in the target bucket, the object owner is not your bucket owner. Because the issue is a little bit hard to teach, so in today's video, I'm going to jump into the conclusion and tell you how to fix. There are two steps to fix this, and we have to fix at the object's file level. Step number one is to, you have to first log in as the admin of that bucket, and then check if you even have the access of that file by downloading it. So if you have the access, skip step one. If you, if you find out you do not have the access, what you're going to do is you need to use CLI to switch to the original bucket object owner's access key, and you have to run this command. In this command, I used recursive to change the object owner of all the files, even including the sub folders of the subfolders in the folder one. And of course, you can modify this on a single object, but this is a key here. You are giving the bucket owner full control. And then let's do step number two. In step number two is we use the bucket owner to take the ownership of the object. So you are going to switch back now in the CLI to the bucket owner's access key. And then use CLI to run this command. In this command, you are basically replacing the metadata of uh, the file itself and to take over the ownership and then the final step is to apply and double check your cross account bucket policy as usual. In the last part of the conclusion, I'm going to tell you how to prevent this from happening and what is the best practice. So when you are putting and writing in the object into the bucket, you should be using the target bucket's account, either that is execution role or that's access key owner to do this action. Because in the AWS, the general rule is which person or which account is executing the command, which account will be the owner. And if the above rule is not doable, make sure in your bottle three or in your CLI command, adding the ACL bucket owner for control at the end. This is the example that is showing in the, in the CLI document. The last thing that in, in this is a new service that they provided, so go to your S3 bucket permission. There is a thing called object ownership. You can change that to the bucket owner preferred. So what does it do is if it's detected, it is bucket owner for control, you will ultimately take over the object ownership. This is actually what we are doing in the step two to fix. And it is better, why? Because in step three, you are actually paying for the request fee, which is one get plus one put, and this is they are doing this for you for free, and prevent you from further issues, I highly recommend to get this turned on. There's an optional, and you can enforce the ACL bucket owner for control, and you can check the document. That's it for the conclusion. I know it's been super confusing and super hard to teach, and let's get started to deep dive into this issue. Let's start from the beginning about the how to set up what is the cross account access. I will use the color coding throughout my presentation. And red, green, they are basically account names. So in my case, red wants to get some data from green's bucket. So that is a cross account because red and green are two different accounts. There are three ways to do so. And we will recommend the first way, which is the bucket policy and IAM policy, which is the easiest and the most common. Of course, you can use other ways, but that is just my recommendation. 
So in the first way, it is a resource-based policy. You have to set up both source IAM and target bucket policy. So red wants to access green. So in the red IAM part, you need to give the red the action to allow this to get from the green bucket. This is the first thing you should set up. The second piece is in the green account. You have to allow red to come in. Again, you have to, in the bucket policy, allow red to come in. And this is a resource that red can access. So first, make sure this is correctly set up. There are two common issues that people always forget. The first thing is in the resource, sometimes people forget to add a slash star. Because if you don't add this, all these subfolders, the red will not have the access. The second thing is check the action. Make sure they are matching here and here. Because if you don't match, AWS will take the minimum privilege. And you might see some issues. For example, you don't have put or delete. And you can always check this link for some additional information. I also put my notes here to check if the account access doesn't work, what is the thing that you can double check. So because it's a little bit hard to teach, I'm going to use an example that happens in real life and then we will convert back into the bucket area with some demo. Let's get started. So in my first example, uh, this is Yellow. Yellow owns his laptop, and so he can use his laptop at his home, right? This is very common. Okay, in this case one, there's another thing, is if some other friends come to his home, the Yellow can of course allow Green and Red to use his laptop at his place. So everyone in this case will be able to access this laptop. Let's go into the case number two. So one day, Yellow goes to Green's apartment and he left his laptop at Green's place. But in this case, this laptop belongs to Yellow. I use this little rectangle to show the ownership. And he didn't allow Green to use that. So in this case, do you think if Green can use Yellow's laptop? The answer is no, right? Because Yellow didn't give permission to Green, even he, he left his laptop at Green's home. Make sense so far? Let's go to the next one. In this case, Yellow also left his laptop at Green's place. But this time Yellow says, hey Green, you can use my laptop and I can create a user account for you. But this laptop is still mine, and you can borrow it. OK, in this case, can Green use Yellow's laptop at Green's home? The answer is yes, sure, because Yellow has granted permission. So Green can use Yellow's laptop. And the last case is, let's continue from case 3. Yellow owns this laptop. And he also allows Green to use his laptop. One day, Red comes to Green's home and says, hey, can you use this laptop? In human world, is this doable? The answer is no. Red cannot use Yellow's laptop. Why? Because Yellow allowed Green to use his laptop, but never allowed Red to use. So Red is not able to use this laptop. Even he's at Green's home. Then there's a final question for you. If Green wants Red to use the laptop, what can he do? There are two ways. First, first he can call Yellow say, hey, can you grant permission to allow Red to use? I think this is most people would do. So in this case, actually, we do not recommend this method. The reason is there's, there's too much effort, and I will explain later. The second way is Green because he has full access of this laptop. He can just build a new identical laptop, or he can just copy over the data into, into this new laptop. So now, Green owns this new laptop, and he can decide 
to borrow this laptop to read to use at his home. So these are the four cases, and I hope that makes sense in real life. Now let's go to the hard part and switch to the real system logic and see how that is working at the backend. I will also have some demo, so stay with me. So let's switch that real example into the system backend. So red, green, yellow, those can be the user role, service role, execution role, or any AWS principle. And sometimes it can be AWS owned services role. The laptop in the example is the object. It can be a file, a picture, anything. The rectangle that I have above the laptop is the who is the owner of the laptop. So remember, there's one rule. One object can only have one owner. There is no co-ownership in S3. And the last thing is in the ACL, Access Control List, we can add additional accounts. This is similar as you have a Windows laptop, and you can add multiple users into this laptop by creating accounts for them. But still, it has only one owner, so I use a bigger one to indicate who is the real owner. In this demo picture, the true owner is yellow, but green was also added into the ACL and can access the object. Now, let's revisit our animation. Case 1 is the most common case. This big rectangle here is the bucket, and yellow uploaded a file into this bucket. So this bucket, of course, belongs to yellow. And objects also belong to yellow, similar like here. And because of this, of course, you can use the regular cross-account access rules to give access to other accounts and their users. This is the most common case and no issue. So in the console, it is like I added a file and upload it. And I click upload. I can use this file and I am the owner of this file. And of course, I can give the cross account access to other accounts. Let's move on to the second case. In the second case, now this is green, and green has a bucket. But in the bucket, there is an object, but the ownership is actually yellow. And in the system backend, it will say the object owner is yellow, and the ACL is also only yellow, but the bucket owner who owns the bucket is actually green. So what is the root cause of this? The developers in the yellow has a full access to their objects. When they are dropping this file into the green bucket, for some reason, they didn't add bucket owner full control in the ACL rule. And because of this, the new bucket owner, which is green, was not added into the ACL. And in the ACL, that is why you have only yellow. If ACL check failed, even the new admin, which is green, will not have the access to the object. The only access green has is to delete this file. Let's get into, into an example. I'm using my CLI here in this window, and I logged in as yellow developer. This is a copy command, copy from yellow to green. The yellow bucket is tfsdl, and the green bucket is tfsds. I copied this 1.png into no access png for demo purpose. And you can note that I didn't add bucket owner for control, and let's see what will happen. I run this command. It says finish copying. By the way, I have granted the cross account access in advance. Let's go into the actual buckets and find out the no access in the green bucket. Let me do a refresh in the green bucket. 
there is no access.png is here. Let me click that. If I scroll down, you will see in the service set encryption, it says and no arrow. And in the ACL, you will also see uh, access denied arrow. But I am the admin of this account. I also got this arrow. That is because I'm not added into the ACL. Even I want to see here, I click object actions and I click download. I also got denied as an admin, as in the green. So how to fix this? This is our step one fix. We will give the bucket owner the full control, which is read and write, aka as the new bucket owner into the ACL. So the steps first is we're going to use the original object owner's AC access key, which is yellow. And we use CLI to run this below command. Let's switch back to CLI. Here is the command, and I finish running. So see here, I just copy from no access.png into also the no access.png and to replace with ACL bucket owner for control, and it says finished. Let's go to the bucket and see. This is our no access.png. Let's click. Now I see the ACL denied error was gone, and also the service that encryption denied error was gone. And I can go up to click download. And now the issue is fixed. I have no issue accessing the data. So here is the step one, how to fix. Here's additional knowledge for you. It's at the beginning. How should the yellow developer to prevent this from happening at the very first place? The answer is very easy. You just need to add bucket owner for control at the end. Let me put into this command here. In this command, I copy from also the one dot png into this name bucket owner for control dot png. In this case, I have the ACL bucket owner for control there. Let's see the object. I go back to the folder, refresh, and see here bucket owner for control. Let's scroll down and see. This time, my ACL didn't get denied. And it says in the ACL, the object owner is some external account, which we did, didn't get to see who that really is, but we have the ID here. And it also says your AWS account was, is in this ACL. And we are all good. And I can also download this. Here, this is what we just did. So after the fix, now it becomes into the case three. And in the case three, the object owner is still yellow. But in the ACL, we have both yellow and green. The bucket is owned by green. There's only issue if you have a third account that want to cross account access this object, which is case four. Let's see what will happen and how to fix. In case four, we carry over from case three that green is the bucket owner and there is an object that is owned by yellow, but green has a bucket owner full control in the ACL. There is a red come in as a third party. Even green in the bucket policy gives red the access to raise this object. Red will still fail to see why. Because first, red is not in the ACL, ACL check fails. And also, bucket policy is not going to overwrite the ACL. And your bucket policy is invalid in this case. So let's visit back our question here. So why don't we recommend that we can ask yellow to come here and change the ACL? Sure. 
te technically speaking, that is doable. So you ask the owner of the yellow to log into their CLI and to go into your bucket to add the access into the ACL that is working. But there are some cases, yellow might be an AWS owned service account and you cannot have the access to their access key or they cannot change that for you. This is example on the right part is you can see the owner is this external SP some, something. This file is actually dropped by compute optimizer into our S3 bucket. But the owner here, this is actually an AWS own service account. So in this case, you cannot really go and ask AWS to change the ACL for you. So what can we do? The fix is we are going to copy to itself and replace. So why? This is the rule in the AWS is who does the action who will own the object, period. So in this case, we ask green to copy this file to itself. This time, who does this? It is green that does this action. In this case, the owner will change from yellow to green by green copying the file to itself and replace it. What you're going to do now is in the CLI, now you're going to switch to green's access key here and use CLI to run this command. In this command, we just copy from this folder to the same folder and we add recursive to apply to all subfolders and subfolders of subfolders. And we want to replace the object owner. Once this is done, Green will be able to own this object and he can now, like case number one, it is an easy cross account access. So one quick demo here is I'm going to go to my command line. In this case, I'm first going to switch AWS config. All right, I finished switching my access key into green. Before I execute the final fix command, Let's do a quick check on the object we just finished. So this is my demo bucket. Let's scroll down and check the ACL. In here, it says bucket owner, your AWS account is owned by me. I'm green. And here, let's remember this F78. That is the ID of this AWS account. Now let's go into the no access.png, which we fixed earlier. Let's go into the details and scroll down into the ACL. It says in the ACL, the object owner is something that is definitely not end with F78 is 122. That is the yellow's account. But it says here on the second, your AWS account is also there, it's F78. So that is what, what we just added and fixed. We added ourselves into this ACL for the read and read write access. So you can tell we are not the object owner. Now let's run the final face command and see what will change. In here, I'm going to use CP and to replace no access.png back also to no access.png. And I'm just going to a metadata replace. Let's do an enter. And it's finished. Let's do a refresh. Let's scroll down into the ACL section. Okay, look at this. Now the object owner changed to F78. That is our account. And the other account, it is gone. So you can tell we took the complete ownership here. And now as usual, we can 
use the cross account access to grant to red. That concludes our demo and fix. Two things that I want to mention. The first is you can change to bucket owner preferred in the permission. Let's go back. So this is my bucket. Under permission, there is one thing called object ownership, and I can click edit. Here, the default selection is object owner. It says the object writer will remain to be the object owner. And that's the reason it caused me us a lot of trouble. And now you have the option to change to the bucket owner preferred, which means as long as there is bucket owner full control in the ACL, it will ultimately take over the ownership. I definitely recommend you to change to this option. Let's turn it on and see what will happen. It only will apply to future objects that will be added in. I'm going to hit Save Change. I pull my CLI, and now I'm going to switch back to Yellow's account, which is the external, external account to run. The change I made here is I changed the name, the new name that I'm going to copy from the 1.png into the bucket. Now it become I added the after bucket owner preferred.png and I put in ACL bucket owner for control. And let's see what will happen this time. It's finished. Let's go. Here it is already dropped after bucket owner preferred. I click in. Let's scroll down into the ACL. Did you see what's changed here? Now the bucket owner says your AWS account and it is F78 as we predicted. And also the yellow account is totally gone from this ACL. This is the same as we did in step two. Why it is better? When we run the step to fix, AWS will actually charge us two requests, one get and one put. But here, this is a free service. And also, it avoided a lot of trouble in the future. So I definitely recommend you to turn on that service. The final thing that I want to talk about is, if for any reason your issue or your case is still not fixed, please feel free to reach back to AWS support at any time. And you can get a one-on-one -on -one service from the support portal, click support and click support center. Or contact your AWS account manager for more information. And that's it. Even this video is a little bit specific and a little bit technical. I still hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this video is helpful. Thank you and see you next time.